Hi, everyone. It is my great pleasure today to introduce Jean-Marc Demy. Um, last year, Jean-Marc spent the bulk of his time and energy redesigning one of the most popular apps on Earth, Facebook Messenger. And he's here today to share his incredible experience with us. Um, when you think of Messenger, I mean, who in this room has never used Messenger? Seriously, anyone in this room who never used Messenger? All right, one person. Well, fair enough. Well done. Uh, but I mean, it's quite incredible, right? Over a billion people use that app every month. And um, I mean, you don't become the director of design of Facebook Messenger by accident. Uh, when you look at uh, Jean-Marc's resume, he spent nearly 10 years working on some of the most advanced messaging and emailing systems, starting with uh, Sparrow, uh, a cutting edge email client for iOS and macOS. Then when Sparrow got acquired by Google, working with the Gmail and the inbox teams. So when you think about it, Jean-Marc is probably one of the most experienced product designer when it comes to messaging systems. Um, he's been kind enough to fly yesterday from San Francisco with his wife and kids. He spent most of his night finalizing the 3D animations for this presentation. So please give him a warm welcome. Thank you. We all work for different companies, different goals, different teams, and different products. But one thing that unites all of us today in this room is the pursuit of the perfect balance. Hi. <laughs> My name is Jean-Marc, and I'm a product design director at Facebook. Today we're going to talk about our recent new Messenger redesign. We're going to start by talking a little bit about the history, because to understand the amount of work and how big the project is, you need to understand where we started and how Messenger evolved. Then I will talk about our goals and how we were able to set ourselves our goals and how we work as a team. The last chapter is going to be around design principle, and I am going to do a deep dive into the intentionality behind the new messenger. Two thousand eleven, the first time we introduced the messenger iOS and Android app. Now you are able to speak to your friends and family in real time. In two thousand thirteen we completely redesigned the Messenger with a new user experience, new design, and also new tools to express yourself. It was the start of something big. 2015, we introduced even more features like uh, chat customization with colors, emoji, and nicknames. From there, the list goes on and on. We're in 2018, and we went from three tabs to nine tabs in order to accommodate all of the features we invented and developed in the app. So to give you a sense of scale, Messenger today is used by 1.3 billion people every month. 410 million call and video chat every month. 500 million people use stories every day. To give you an order of magnitude, that's 2.5 times the population of Brazil. 20 billion businesses, conversation every month. That's, <laughs> that's more than four times the entire population of the Asia continent. Because we have a lot of users, we hear a lot of feedback. We hear people's perspective from all over the world. So I realize that not all of us in the room have access to the scale and tools we do at Facebook. But through quantitative, and analysis, through quantitative analysis and user research, we found out that all of our user perspective was unanimous. They wanted an app that was more simple to use and focus on what matters the most for them, their conversation. It was a great time for us to stop, 
step back and look at the bigger picture. As I mentioned, we hear people, um, opinion and feedback from all over the world. And so we have access at Facebook to some incredible tools. But I realize that not all of us have access to that in that room today. So what can you do instead? You can start by a simple search on social media, such as Twitter. Look for the name of your product, and you will see. People have a lot of things to say about it. Another example, check the App Store reviews. You will gather some precious insights about what people think about your product. A simple query sometimes can go a long way. What my, what's the most important to me is the third one, is the common sense. You are all the user of your product, so use your best judgment. If you sense that something is going wrong, it's probably because it is. OK, let's talk about the goals for a minute. Honestly, that redesign was challenging for multiple reasons. But we used a simple analogy to help us create them. Here's a way to look at the work we do. All of us in this room today, this is what we do. We are building chairs. <laughs> this is your product. Now, if you want your user to use your chair, you need to find the right balance between the three legs, your three pillars. Your user, your business, and the craft, the quality of the app. And so if you focus too much on one of these, if you focus too much on your business, if you forget about your users, or if you do not invest on the quality of the app, this is what you're ultimately building. A chair that is unique, but very few people will use it. So we used this principle uh, and this idea and this metaphor to come up with our own goals that will work for us at Messenger. For our users, we want a simple, powerful, and easy-to-use app. And that means we will not remove any features. For a business, we are fat, we are growing, we are successful, and we want to maintain that, obviously, right? So our top line metrics should be neutral or hopefully positive. The last thing is about the craft and the quality of the app. We're going to revisit entirely the new visual design system. We're going to introduce some delightful features, and we're going to look at the brand. So who's building the new messenger chair? We work with a lot of people, a variety of jobs. We work every day, and we collaborate. We try to improve the product from every angle possible. Obviously, I'm lucky, and not all of us have access to these kind of resources. And if your team looks something more like that, well, that doesn't mean you cannot create amazing products. Here's a valuable tip that I learned working with smaller uh, team and at smaller companies. You have to remember, every one of you have a different set of skill set of talent, and you have a different perspective on the product. When you start working together, you work overlap. This is where collaboration happens, and it should be the baseline for every team. It sounds obvious, said like that, but I see a lot of companies and teams absolutely neglecting that aspect of the work. Working in silo can be great, but in my opinion, the trade-offs are way too big. Finally, where the real magic happens is when all of our teams come together, when we collaborate, when we sit in the room, and we think about what we want to build on how to improve the product. Let me give you a concrete example. If you are a PM in the room today, I think there's a few of you all. Well, invite designers, invite your team, engineers, to the table you will see that they have a lot of things to share. They have a different perspective on the product. They have a lot of ideas on how to improve your product and achieve your goals. 
If you are designers, that works for you too. Do not throw your mockups over the fence. Work with the person who's going to make your design a reality. Sit next to them. Try to speak their language. Because ultimately, your team, your company, want the absolute same thing. You want to build the best product. OK, now that we took a, uh, a look at the bigger picture, um, we look at the scale and what we want to do, let's dive in the work that happened with design. If you're a designer in the audience, raise your hand. OK, well, there's a, there's a few of you. I'm not going to give you a lecture about visual design. But we found out that using certain tools and framework were um, helpful in setting the direction for the new visual design and the brand. When you use these tools, it helps everyone from your team speak the same language. You will avoid miscommunication, and you will get to product decision faster. Here's an example. <laughs> when defining the rules of our visual system, we created a spectrum from toy to tool. And the reason we came up with this analogy is because we felt that's how people were using our product. On one hand, with a toy, Messenger can be a fun and delightful way to express yourself. We have GIFs, emojis, and masks. On the other hand, with a tool, Messenger is a fast and reliable way to communicate with your friends and family, the people you care about. And because we felt we were somewhere in the middle, we used that idea and this spectrum to help us guide, starting with our UI. For example, our bubbles are never rectangular, purely sharp, and they're never really circular. We were somewhere in the middle. We found the balance that worked for us at Messenger. And we extended this idea as we moved forward for our icons. We used consistent corner radii, making icons more tappable, human, and approachable. And if you look at the bigger picture, you now start to realize it creates a nice flow, a nice visual rhythm. But we didn't stop there. We went as far as creating a rule on how to use angles. We did that not because for fun, but we wanted to reinforce the consistency and weave all of the elements together. For our logo, it used to be very sharp, very angular, and so we completely revisited it. We used this new DNA we just created and used that to revamp our logo. More rounded, modern, and approachable. All of that created a consistent visual system. As for the, as for the colors, we refreshed the entire palette, not only because we wanted to be bold, but we felt we wanted our users to extend the way they express themselves. And so we took this opportunity and revisit entirely how people can customize their conversation, the thing that matters the most to them. So we created five gradients using a three-point system, that's for you designers, that allows us to control the color at every moment possible that will provide the best color. This gradient work as a background. And what's cool about that is that as you scroll your thread and your conversation, the bubble change colors. They come to life. We created a new dimension for the thing that people care the most about, their conversations. Another example of how we use the spectrum and how that was helpful for us. You have to iterate. In order to that spectrum to be useful, you have to find the boundaries. The where is too far. One of our iterations for the music and album cover art was to extract the color and populate the bubble underneath to make that more intelligent and more blended with the conversation. But, As we brought back the bubble in context of the thread, it became way too noisy, way too loud. You will lose the focus on what matters to the people and to you, your conversations. 
for us, that was the end of the, one end of the spectrum. That was too far. So we ended up dialing back the exploration within the range of our spectrum. Because finding boundaries is hard, using this tool and framework to help our team speak the same language, and we get to that uh, final design faster. OK, now this is like probably the most challenging part of this redesign. Um, and I guess it's hard for every team and company. Because navigation and uh, information architecture is tricky for everyone. A few people, maybe one person, will look at the entire app, holistically at the app, and will make really hard decisions. Something we learned about navigation, a cool sentence, success and engagement is not about how many entry points you have or you add. It's about the quality of the experiences people have using your product. This is all about trading off quantity versus quality. Think about it this way. Would you rather build a mansion with 50 rooms the mansion is pretty big, and so finding your way through that mansion is pretty complex. And every time you open a door, you don't really understand what's behind. There's no furniture, what's that room for? Or, on the other hand, build a mansion with only five rooms. Way more simple to navigate, you can find your way more easily, and every time you open a door, it makes sense. You understand what's behind. There's a bed, it's a bedroom. There's a baby crib, it's a baby room. <laughs> and I think you know where I'm going, uh, and I hope we know which kind of mansion we want to build. By the way, hopefully it's the second one. So using that metaphor, we wanted Messenger new navigation to serve three purposes. And here are examples of how we apply these principles. For focus. We consolidated entry points. We went back to the origin from nine types to three that time. Less cognitive load. You have a bigger focus on your conversations. We optimized the space of the mansion with more functional rooms, and now it's really, fine. It's really easy to find your way. For relevance, we regrouped all of the creation method in one place. Photo and text creation are at the same place. Now the shower is in the bathroom, <laughs> uh, and the fridge is in the kitchen. We grouped in the same place elements, elements people associated together. In that example, the people. Your stories, your friends' stories, your friends, uh, you, the list of the people who are online, etc., etc. Everything that are related to people, will find their way in this new tab, the People tab. We created a living room for you to find the people you care about and talk to them. Another example for association, we care about our uh, developers. They are creating amazing experiences for Messenger. And so what we did is actually we grouped two tabs into one funneling all of the people intent to discover new, the new things to do on Messenger in one place. So to, to summarize a little bit, this is where we started. And this is the version 4 of Messenger. More modern, ownable, playful, and friendly. It's that time of the talk. I want to talk about something that I care about deeply. Failing at school. I dropped out when I was 18. Looking back at my journey, I feel like the only reason why I'm here today speaking in front of you is because of my passion for design, craft, and product. And there are some times in your career when you're going to work on something so inspiring that's going to lead a fire inside of you. You're going to want to do everything, and you're going to do everything. And you will go above and beyond to make this a reality, to make this happen. I hope you can or will relate to that at some point in your career. Passion 
is one of the most amazing drivers for your career and personal growth. One last story. This is about um, one of the latest feature and really popular we released on Messenger. And it's the dark mode. So as designer, we are always presenting the work we're doing to everyone. From the engineers we work with, the team, to Mark. One thing in common is every time we were showing that design, and that design went on screen, people were excited. They wanted to use it. And for engineers, they wanted to build it now. We quickly realized we started that fire. We scoped dark mode, and honestly, it, was, it didn't look great. <laughs> An enormous amount of time from the engineers, they had to rewrite a lot of components to make that work. For designers, well, they had to look at every screen of the app, every icon, every button, every color, make sure that works. But I witnessed something really inspiring. The team rallies around that feature, and a few days in, a few days in, engineers show up at my desk with prototypes of the dark mode. They went to great length, um, and they went above and beyond to make this a reality. Designers and PM, PM were looking at how to make that happen, to carve some time. How can I trade off things to make dark mode a reality? People were inspired. That fire was glowing. And in my opinion, this is one of the reasons why we were able to ship dark mode and ship it successfully. Do you remember about the mention and the entry points? The way we actually introduced dark mode was through an Easter egg. Nobody knew about it. We didn't tell anyone about it. We created a secret door in that mansion, and this went viral. People were, enter were entering in that, in that room and in, through that door at an insane pace. We didn't need big buttons. We didn't need a badge. We didn't need anything else. People wanted that feature so badly, they went to great lengths to use it. And the only reason is because we built something that they found value, valuable. I think we built a pretty cool room. We shipped Messenger in October 2018, and we successfully achieved our goals. We delivered a better experience, a more simplified app, increasing our business target, and shipping a well-crafted app. Find the right balance. This is the product you want to build, not this one. Thank you. <laughs>